All right, so we're working on teaching the dogs to indicate on odor for detection work. We're utilizing this box system that's got two holes. One we call the feed hole. Actually, the dog puts their nose through the, the hole to acquire the scent. This is the feed hole, and then at back, there's a little trap door that contains the odor, and it's also got little holes to allow the, uh, the odor to continue to come through. But this way the dog cannot mess with the target odor whatsoever, so it's a safe environment. We're using ScentLogic's heroin. And what we want to teach the dog is that putting their nose in this little chamber pays very well. And because a, no a dog is a, a creature that perceives the entire world through its nose, it cannot shut its nose off. It's always acquiring, acquiring odor. So the very first step we want to do is make the hole valuable. How do we do that? We have food in our hand and we go through a little feed hole on the side and we do a little puppet show like this. So the dogs can see the food in the hand here and the dog is held on a leash by the handler just a couple feet away. And once we see the dog is target locked on the food, as soon as it comes and enjoys the hand, the hand opens with food. Reload again and again and again. So the dog learns that being in this little open area, they can acquire food. And then once the dog makes contact with the fingers, several reps down the road, we pull the dog's nose into the chamber, click and feed, click and feed. Now, what you have to be very careful of if you're working with small dogs or puppies, that if their head gets in here and their ears go past the threshold, their heads can get trapped. And then they start to wiggle and freak out and then putting their nose in there becomes a trap. It becomes aversive. So you'll be very careful with the size of the dog. Generally, with most dogs that are adult size, with working with your normal working breeds, mouths, shepherds, duchies, most of their noggins will stop around the forehead and ears are right here. So, but as we continue, is the dog has a promise that there's gonna be food in there for sticking their face in there. So again, as the no nose goes in and they penetrate the threshold, click and pay, click and pay, click and pay. We're gonna flood it and have a lot of reward history. This is a direct reward system, almost like luring and obedience. If you understand free shaping, you can also do it that way through self-discovery. But this is a process that we use with a lot of folks that don't have that kind of time. So we're gonna do a direct reward lure system. Again, the dog's nose goes in, the, the hand is already there waiting as a promise with food. Then we change the criteria. The food will be outside the box, just here on the side of the feed hole. And the dog nose, dog's nose goes in the hole, and then the hand goes in to meet them after the click. What happens through progression is sometimes the dogs will learn to come over here to try to cheat, especially if you lured in obedience and they've learned that your hands pay well with food. And by pressuring the hand, the hand opens. It's a waiting game. So if the dog comes here and continues to press your hand, press your hand, press your hand, you wait until they disconnect from your hand. And as soon as you see them going back to the area where they got paid well before, click, and then you meet them inside again. So this happens over, sometimes in, even in the one session, you can kind of get to the point where your hand's outside the box and the dog learns that, hey, I shove my hole, my foot, <laughs> my nose in the hole, and I get paid for doing so. And again, the whole time they're acquiring that target odor. They're also acquiring my odor, they're acquiring food odor. We go through a, a process of, of reducing those, those other odors and becoming the common denominator of target scent. So what happens later is that then the food becomes the distractor. Then instead of the food being right here, it's gonna be right out in front, daring the dog to go grab it. They grow, they go, they go, nothing happens. And again, at some point in time, they're gonna disconnect from the hand, go to the hole, boom, you feed back inside. What happens again over time is you start to build on that moment and eventually the dog shoves their nose in and you pay them outside the box. Shove their nose in, pay them outside the box. That happens over and over and over. And later you start to increase the distance of you being away from the odor then it becomes indirect, so click and release. In the early stages of uh, teaching the dogs to target point on the box, you want to build duration, so the dogs hold the position longer and longer and longer. Before you start segueing and getting away from the direct system, you want to add duration in the beginning. And you can also add little distractors too. You can, you can clap, you can whistle, you can knock on some walls, but again, the dog learns that the payday comes from keeping their nose in the box and being vigilant. Very important as early stages is that in the beginning, it's like luring and obedience. The dog learns it's about the food in the hand, right? But as quickly as you can, hopefully in the first session, you educate the animal that it's about ignoring the hand and the food, going to into the behavior of pinpointing and acquiring target odor, which brings 
the reward and the food back to them. So it's direct. So the dog comes in, pushes their face into the hole, and then you meet them. So in the very beginning, again, it's target, on target. They, they push their nose into source. And what you're looking for, and it's a feeling, because you can't see it outside the box if you're an onlooker, but the only person that can experience it is the person that's holding the food, working the dog, is that what you're clicking, it's not just abstract clicking because the dog's in the realm of sniffing, it is the fact that they've put their nose into the box, they're pushing your hand to get paid, and it's that effort, that vigilance, and that pushing through the threshold is what's getting marked. And it, it's very quick clicking, and it sounds like it's just rapid fire clicking for no reason, but as you're in the moment with the dog, you have to click those moments because later what I wanted to click is intake. I have several videos out where you can hear the dog sniffing in the box and that's what I'm marking. And that's impossible on a throw, throwing direct reward system. If you're throwing toys, you can't mark <laughs> intake. Maybe you can, but I can't. But So the next phase is when the dog is trying to get the food out of your hand here, Again, especially if you've lured in the past, the dog can learn that pushing the hand pays. What you're marking is the decision to disconnect from the hand and go back into that realm of detection. Maybe they don't even shove their nose in the box in the first couple reps, but it's the idea of disconnecting from the hand and going back to what's paid them better. So as they separate, click, and then you meet them inside. It's in this very specific moment where the dog is educated that it's not about the food in the hand, it's not about the reward, it's about the behavior that brings the reward. And it's that little separation, that very early imprinting that's crucial about making this system clear.